Over the next three decades, it's estimated some two billion people will be added to the global population. And according to the UN, the majority of that growth will take place in Africa, which is also home to some of the world's fastest growing economies. Women are key drivers of that development. They are a critical source of food security and provide most of Africa's crops. But gender inequality remains a major barrier to the continent's financial progress. African women are disproportionately employed in the informal sector and they carry the majority of the domestic burden. The UN says women in sub-Saharan Africa collectively spend about 40 billion hours a year collecting water. The COVID-19 pandemic has only amplified existing inequalities, but now a powerful new generation of African women are using their collective voices to bring about change and highlight the struggles girls face every day. My mother and grandmother now say they hope I forgive them for bringing me into a world where my very existence is a transgression, where demanding change is mundane and violence against my sisters is just another Monday. Time now for the exchange and my conversation with Mumbi Macharia, the young poet who wrote Dear World Leaders. Today, she's giving a special performance at the UN High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development. Earlier, I spoke with Mumbi about the inspiration behind her poetry and the message she has for the world. Mumbi, great to have you on and congratulations. Um, what an impassioned video and poem that you've written, Dear World Leaders. Um, reading it, uh, listening to it, listening to it, I felt so much emotion. Um, and you hit on so many issues that women across Africa face on a daily basis. I want you to take me back to when you wrote this and why and what inspired you. Well, this poem was inspired by women who I see every day. Um, in everything I do um, day to day, I encounter so many women who do so much. Um, for example, just eating at like um, roadside um, restaurants, we call them kibandas. Um, you see women who spend all day sitting there cooking with their babies, they um, put to sleep next to them as they're cooking. Um, just women who do so much. And I wanted to write a poem just from their point of view. Um, just to tell the world that um, these stories we hear about um, the challenges that women face um, and young girls, they're not so detached from us. They're not in a different world. They're right at our doorstep. And so I just wrote this poem to tell world leaders and everyone in the world really that um, these are things that happen every day. And these are people who we should see um, as being equal to us, who have issues, that need to be addressed and they are our sisters and they are people that we should listen to. I am my grandmother's legacy. I cannot even begin to tell you how much that resonated with me because then I think about the generational growth um, that I have been fortunate to experience but so many other women on the continent will not be able to experience and we need to think about generational changes and that's where sustainable development goals come in. When you think about the gap between you and your grandmother and perhaps you and your future children or what you're seeing right now, do you feel optimistic that there will be changes made um, for the new generation of women or are you worried? And that is sort of the source of this poem that you've written. I feel like right now, uh, my generation, where we are, we're at a place where we've come so far um, so there are so many strides that have been made, so many opportunities that I have that my grandmother's generation did not have. But at the same time, as much as it's a good thing, there's also a stagnation in that um, the development of the progress isn't going as fast as we would have wanted it to. And I wouldn't want us to get to a place where now for my children or my, my grandchildren, um, we're at a place where the development has stagnated um, that they're at the same place that I am or that things have even gone back to being how they were during my grandmother's time. Your incredible observations of what women go through on the continent, you know, um, 
feeding babies while being hard at work. And the fact women are main breadwinners when it comes to the informal sector. They are the ones that are in the agriculture space. I mean, that's what a lot of people, I think, on the global stage don't really understand about what women do on a day-to-day -day basis, their productivity um, and efficiency. What did you hope to achieve by sending this very message out to world leaders? Is it about policies? Is it about money? Is it about more focus? Because I know you want to see change, but in what form are you hoping to create that through, through your poems and art? So it's just a call for world leaders to know that as much as, um, yes, they're at meetings and, and making all these pledges, that at the end of the day, the women who are on the ground also deserve to have the action taken. And they also they deserve some sort of um, proactive and action taken for them to see what these discussions um, are about and what um, results they need to yield. And that they also need to be in the rooms where when people are talking about them, they also need to have faith. They need to be able to say what they need, um, what they're lacking. And yeah, women need to be at the table. So, Mumik, if you could give me a bit of um, insight, and you said this in your poem, and you said, you know, we're going to take a few steps back because of COVID-19, and in fact, you're so right. I mean, that's what the data shows us, that the, the gains that we've made, specifically with gender equality and also anything to do with women's rights or even gender-based violence, we've seen some of those gains reversed because of COVID-19. Have you seen this firsthand? Is this, is this a worry for you as a young woman? Yes, it is. Um, I would say especially in my country after COVID-19 and especially when schools were closed, um, we would hear a lot of stories on the news of um, young schoolgirls, a high number of schoolgirls who were pregnant um, in 2020. And these are girls in their teen years. What are the situations that led to them being pregnant? You know, it's not just enough to say that schools, a lot of schoolgirls have gotten pregnant during lockdown. It's also important to understand that is their home environment safe because they've been forced home for a whole year. Are their home environments safe for them? Are they experiencing sexual abuse when they're at home? What is it that has made it that so many of them are getting pregnant? Mubi, you're an example of the incredible talent um, and the incredible voices and potential this continent has. Well, Africa has. I'm not in Africa anymore, but um, it excites me. You're also speaking to high-level delegations um, and you're going to be you know, speaking your poem and performing your poem. What are you hoping to evoke in the decision makers that you'll be speaking to? Well, I'm hoping that the decision makers, when they hear my poem, will one, see that this is coming from a young person who has something to say and that they will understand that I wrote this from the perspective of the women who this is affecting and that it will ignite something in them to understand that we need action. We need them on the ground. We need them um, in the grassroots to come and see what is happening. Mubi Macharia, I hope to hear your name a lot more, and I, hope, uh, I, and I look forward to speaking to you a lot more in the future. Thank you so much, and good luck. Thank you.